Okay, YouTubers, today we're working on this 2007 Chevy uh, 2500 HD. It's a 4x4, and we're going to be replacing the water pump. I'm working in this small shop. I'm working on getting a bigger shop, but it's going to have to do for now. I'm going to try to do it by leaving this cover here. And this is an old truck. It's a work truck, so there's going to be a lot of issues. I know it's leaking oil from somewhere, but right now they just need the water pump. So, your truck may look different. Like I said, I'm gonna try to do it with that uh, plastic on there. And I already hooked up to the uh, uh, radiator hose on the bottom. Let me get some light down there. It's hard to see because I can't get no light really down there, but let me see if you can see real quick. Yeah, you can't see. Let me take off some stuff up here on the top and then I'll give you a shot of that. I guess first things first, let's get this cover off. It should just pop off. Yeah. It's held on there by these little studs right here. And then there's like a rubber grommet. I don't know if you can see them right there. They go into those little studs. And then we'll take an eight millimeter, loosen these clamps. And this one, I don't know if you can see that the camera's shooting too far. This clamp here. Oops. I'll show you where that goes later. And uh, unhook this uh, mass airflow sensor. All you do is press on that tab here, and it should come out. Just press on that, pop it out, and let it. Get it. Okay, let's just loosen this one. See that box is all loose. So like I said this, this is a truck. It's seen better days. Like that. Before you take this off, a little hose right here. Just pull it out. It pulls right out. And then right here, before you just start pulling, you've got a one of these little studs. You want to pop this up, up from. Now you can pull it back, or else you're gonna be fighting it and you might break it okay and now it's just a matter of working it these hoses gonna get in the way there we go comes out Okay, now let me take this hose off. I think that's uh, another eight millimeter right there. Let me stretch over and get that bad boy out. Almost went all the way, and it's not probably gonna leak nothing because uh, I've already uh, drained it through the bottom, which I'm gonna show you here in a little bit. <clears throat> yeah, it's like a give me a hard time. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna take that uh, shroud off, and it's held on by I think it's two 10 millimeters, one right there, one over there. And then it's got those plastic rivets right there. It's got two of them over there and over here. They're 10 millimeters. I don't know if I mentioned that. Okay. Now we're going to start popping them rivets off. See what's the best way to get this sucker up. Pops right out. Full of oil. That pops right out. We'll sit over there where a battery's supposed to go. Hey, where is the battery? Oh, it's back there. And this should come out now. You know, you need to just take the top part out. Now, down here, 
we got these hoses. You can see through all that grease there. Those, we got to take them off. I guess there's three. A big one right here. The clamp. And they all have the same clamp. <clears throat> okay, this is the very first thing I did. Like I was trying to show you, but I had a lot of stuff in the way. I took this bottom hose off. See, you can see where it's off. And that's how you drain the uh, fluid or the uh, coolant. Yeah. You can see, see where it's at. Nope, can't see, huh? See where I have it hooked up? It's still hooked up to that clamp. If you can see, see? See if we can get in there with this clamp. Like I said, you can take a pry bar and help it out. Just don't break nothing. I'm gonna lean on this uh, tension pull in. That should be strong enough. <clears throat> and here it comes. Here it comes. <clears throat> okay, just let that rest there. Get my pliers. Go for the other ones. <clears throat> that one threw some coolant. <sighs> one more to go. That one. This one will go this route with you. And they do make tools for the, these. And I left them at the other garage. You sh shove it in there and it'll break the seal. Okay. We'll put this one back here. <clears throat> we won't get it mixed up, but just in case. All right, guys, this gave me hell. Finally figured it out. See, I've got these tools and this tool. And last time I did a Hummer, this tool, it, it worked, it was a pain in the rear and it worked, but this one, it has the nut right here. Let me show you on the car. This isn't the right wrench, but I'm just gonna show you. <clears throat> on the truck, I mean. Okay. I figured, you know, I always leave the belt on, that holds tension and I can break it loose. So I put the uh, proper wrench in there like that and I banged it and banged it, hoping, hopefully, hoping that I would shock it, but that didn't work, it didn't shock it. It wouldn't come loose. I was going like, ah, dang, there's no, nowhere to hold it. It'll spin. So I was, well, let me try something else. So I stopped doing this number. And uh, I just got a crazy idea. And I said, let me put some bolts in there. And it did grab. You got holes right there. It did grab. See? It's going to grab real good here because it's not on the car. But you know, of course, you know, when they're on the car, it's not going to work. I figure I'll hold it with this and get the wrench in here and break that nut. Well, it didn't work. This kept popping and it wouldn't hold. It started bending these cheap screws. So I got tired of trying that. So I go, what else can I do? And I called my brother and he gave me an idea. He thought it had bolts because some have bolts and that's what these hooks are for. To hook up on the bolts and you can hold it steady while you break that nut. So he thought it was bolts. He goes, you can't hook up that hook on the bolts. And I go, it doesn't have bolts. Then I started thinking, well, I can take the, these bolts that I put in here and put one in there and hopefully hold it with this or, or something and then I can turn it. But what happened was when I put a bolt in there, it actually caught somewhere and it stopped it from turning. See, see that bolt right there that I put? This shiny little bolt right there. And it held it from turning. Look, it's not turning. So I was able to turn it and I'll show you how it worked. <laughs> First, let me show you the bolts I used. I think these were it. I don't know if you can see. Got them at O'Reilly's and you probably won't need these, but these were the, uh, I guess the nuts. 
Right, that's yeah. That I was gonna put on that tool. That's how I started first, but that didn't work, so I just stuck up one of them screws or bolts in there and it caught somewhere back here and it locked it so i was able to break it loose like that and i'll show you all right this is what i did i took the proper wrench and put it on there and as you can see right here i know you can't see but i've got that little bolt that i was showing you i stuck it in there and as i turned it it locked it caught somewhere in the pump it, i don't care if it breaks the pump because it's no good and we got a new one then i put a ratchet or a yeah, my ratchet. Uh, I put this long ratchet on it and I gave it hell, guys. Look, when it stopped, it locked on the pump, it broke it loose. So now it's just a matter of spinning it off. If your radiator is real close, you don't want to do this because it might put a hole on the radiator when it comes off. See? Boom. Fine, we got this sucker off. Now we can take the uh, serpentine belt off or loosen it up. If we don't have to take it off, all the way we won't. And I drew a diagram of the route. And this is a tensioner. You turn it towards the driver's side and it loosens the belt. And I think I'll take it off from this pulley because when I take it off from over there, this gets caught on it. <clears throat> and uh, <clears throat> let me just loosen it up. It don't matter. You can take it off completely. That might work now. I think it's going to go on. It'll come completely off. Oh, well, it's off. <laughs> Alright, let's see what we got to do next. And it's always a good idea to <clears throat> get the part beforehand instead of going out and getting it. Uh, this way you can look at it, study it, and you know how many bolts you're going to have to take off, what's holding it. So we got like one, two, three on this side. It looks like these three and those two. And I don't think this one goes all the way through. And maybe these to take off that. But yeah, we can get an idea of what we're looking at. Okay, we got three down here. One, two, three. And then one, two, and there's one down there. And then, of course, these, I guess. I'm going to go ahead and take these off first while it's still on the vehicle, so it won't be moving around a lot on me. <clears throat> All right, I'm just going to break them loose first with this. They're 10 millimeters. Well, these are the ones that are holding the pump. No, well, they're not even that tight. And that's cool. You don't want to really go super tight on these. You could crack the pump. Okay, I broke all the ones that are holding the water pump loose already. Just broke them loose and I'll get them here with the uh, cordless. And now these are 15 millimeters holding that tension pulley. We'll break those. And then those are a little bit tighter than the ones on the water pump. And as I'm doing this, I'm cheating. I'm looking over here at the water pump that's sitting over there looking at me, waiting to get replaced. All right, let's see how these look. Sorry, I'm gonna get in your way just for a little bit. Smaller. So remember, the bottom one was long, and then this middle one is kind of short. see how long this one is see if it's as long as the first one okay yeah the two first ones the top one and the bottom one are long and then the middle one is the short one okay and it helps if you set them in order see that's the way they came out and, you know, I, I set the pulley just the way it was on there too that way you don't get confused I mean, some people don't but some do I do sometimes. All right, let's go ahead and take off this uh, thermostat. It's a 10 millimeter. And I might have to go. Get a gasket for this one if it needs one. Let me put this bowl here. Thank <laughs> you. 
little bolt. Okay. Now comes the thermostat. Now let's finish taking off the water pump. See how they come out? Silicon. Like crazy. And this hill, I'm not the type of like, putting down other mechanics. We all make mistakes and we all do our thing in a different way. I mean, as long as it works and it don't put nobody in danger. Some more silicone. Silicone. Let me use this bad boy to kind of, there we go. So see guys, if you don't want to come out, it's just stuck from being there on for years. That's all I had to do was take that big crowbar and just be careful where you wedge it, you know, and pry on it. Don't go breaking stuff. I wedged it right here and against the block. When it went like that, it popped open or it popped off. Okay, here's the little screw that saved our butt. See, it locked somewhere back there. That's all it is. Little screw. Shoved it in there and it locked it. I guess it's hitting on a, one of these uh, little fins. And it locks on there. Like I said, it don't matter if you break it, but putting it on is a different story. You're going to have to be careful. Hopefully, I won't have a hard time. Yeah, it's got a little bit of a gasket. Right. Here's the new one. Okay, I'm gonna clean the uh, surface where the water pump's gonna go. And uh, these, I found this is pretty neat. I don't know where I got it. AutoZone or Riley, one of those places. It's got a nice shape to it, a uh, design that I can reach in there, you know, real good. And, pick up that gasket that's real good I like it you can change blades when it's done okay guys when you clean it use some kind of a brake cleaner I use this carburetor cleaner and it worked real good with how clean it got it then I use some sandpaper too I don't know what grid it is uh, uh, he sanded it because this was real nasty. Sand it down. Get all that off. Then spray it and wipe it down. Look at that. Nice and clean. Oh, yeah. And if you get any of that gasket material in there, just try to get it out as much as you can with your fingers. and. If it gets into those bolt holes, try to dig it out too. Just be careful, don't tear up the threads. If you got a vacuum or compressed air, use that. I don't have my compressor here yet, so I'll be bringing that tomorrow. <clears throat> now this other one's gonna be a pain in the rear. See it way back in there? That's gonna be fun. Look at my blade, it broke. Oh well. This is sandpaper I use. I guess it's 400 grid. Pretty smooth. But it'll work. Use whatever you want, but this is what I had and it worked good. Alright, guys, I got it. Look how clean it looks. It's right. So, man. Dude. It's right there. See how clean it looks? That's a pain in the rear of those guys. It took me a good 20 minutes. I started with this, but it's so uh, congested in there. I could only do it for a little, then I busted out with this. I was just in there scraping like this, and I even went like this and broke the big gasket, then I peeled it off. Use a lot of uh, brake cleaner. This, this, this worked great for me. I mean, use it, it helps. And then the sandpaper really does the job when you scratch it with that it really knocks off a lot of it so that's what worked for me 
Okay, I cleaned up the uh, thermostat housing. Took some sandpaper and cleaned it up here. And I went ahead and uh, used the, I went and bought a new uh, thermostat. Here's the old one. It looks beat. And if you can see that, it's got a lot of rust and I think it's stretched out. See how it just looks stretched out. And when I put it in here, it's hard to go in. And when it does look what it does, it that gasket gets bent out of shape. It comes out of its little grooves there. And this housing has a little notch there. And then your thermostat, the gasket, has a little nipple there. That's where it goes. Anyway, I tried putting it in a few times and it just wouldn't go in. See, it just distorts the uh, gasket so the guy didn't want one but I just couldn't do this to him I just couldn't put it back in so I went and got one I paid for it and I mean if he says he ain't got the money I'll, I'll give him credit I'll wait on it and when he's ready you pay me for it I just don't want to do a crappy job look how neat that one goes in didn't even have to fight it just make sure it not all been out of shape that looks good so we'll put this one on this is only thirty dollars i mean i know a lot thirty dollars is a lot for some people sometimes you can't afford it so i understand you know that's why people come to us mechanics you know because if they go to a shop the shop's gonna tell them no oh, we have to replace the thermostat too and I cleaned off all the uh, water pump bolts. Took all the silicone off of them. Let's go ahead and put this uh, thermostat in. And you don't need no uh, silicone or anything. It's got this gasket already. It's going to keep it from leaking. And you're going to feel some sponginess when you put it in there. See? Pops up. Hope I got it in the right direction. Now I'm just gonna tighten these by hand. I'm not gonna use the impact, the cordless, because I can't feel how tight it is with the cordless. And I, I, I use it sometimes just to get them going and to where they tighten down like right here. See, that's what I will use it for. And then I would do the tightening by my <clears throat> by hand with the manual ratchet. Okay, it's snug in there. I want to make sure that there's nothing sticking out as far as the gasket. And then I'm gonna do it by hand. Oh, not really. And you don't have to go crazy. That feels good for me. All right, let's figure out how this one goes. All right, remember these two on the side are the real long ones. These two, and then the bottom one's the short one. Yeah, the one right next to the uh, thermostat housing or the thermostat is the short. All right, I'm gonna tighten it. That feels good. That feels good. That feels good. That feels good. I was letting that dig in me, so when it hurt, that was enough. <laughs> Oh yeah, this is the old water pump. This is where it was leaking from. This back cover just came off. Looks like you could just probably smash it in there. You'd be good to go, but hey, once it does that, it's done. Does it for a reason. Oh well. We got a new one. Alright, here it is. Let me set the camera here. Let y'all watch the magic. Okay, I'll let y'all watch from there first. Yeah, 
así. <clears throat> All right. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the gaskets on there. I like these gaskets. You don't need to use any kind of again silicone or nothing. I'm gonna line them up the way they're supposed to go, and I'm gonna run some bolts through there to hold the gasket. All right, here's where you want to have everything at the ready. Focus down there. You're gently gonna try to put it in there and have your 10 millimeter everything ready, cause can't afford to mess this one up. You get one shot and then you gotta start all over. Okay. <clears throat> oh, come on, don't. Thought I was gonna drop the ratchet. If you can get one going and look at the other side, get it going. And then I use this little ratchet. Okay, I think I got that one in. Get this one going. You're gonna have to move the pump a little bit. I hope I wasn't in your way. Okay, I've got two on there. I got this one going and then one over here to the top. So now I'm just gonna start the bottom ones. I'm using this little quarter inch. <clears throat> Look at that gasket. See it right there? Looks good. Okay, now I feel comfortable. They all grabbed. So I'm gonna hit it with this just to make it eat faster. And you might have to move on the pump like that. Where it stops. Okay. Start with this bad boy. That feels good. That feels good. That feels good. <laughs> ding, ding. That means we're done. As far as tighten them. Okay, guys. That's all I'm going to film. I need to get this out tonight. It's already late. I went over. Because I couldn't take that fan off. But I just go in the reverse from here. And when I put this back on, I'm just, just going to have a friend hold it with something and tighten it. And don't forget this right here. Protects your threads. All right, guys. I let it run for a good five minutes and no leaks. Here's where I was concerned right here. In this area, I had seen water, but... I don't see anything anymore. So that's good. All right, let me put the shroud. We're done. Okay, YouTubers, it's all done. Put the shroud, everything back on. Filled it up, topped it up with the uh, coolant. Ran it again, and everything looks good. So. She's ready to go. There you go. Again, guys, thanks for watching. Like always, I appreciate you. God bless you, and good luck.